another weekend, guys. I've ended up going out. I'm not going to moan, no. Claire's working. I've got nothing else to do. Otherwise, I'll be sitting on the settee. But I'm currently at the top of Detlin Hill in the services. That's in Maidstone, sorry, if anyone don't know. And one of our subscribers, he actually reached out to me last week. His dad had an accident in his van. Um, looks really nice. Nissan NV200, 2019. Had a bit of a wallop in the front. So he said to me, it's currently with the insurance company. Um, they've took it to assess it and he'll get back to me and let me know if it becomes available. He's gonna try and buy it back. Obviously, if you have an accident, you can always, you get first shout at buying your own vehicles back. And he was obviously aware of that. He would have got it for a huge, huge discounted price. And then he reached out to me and he's gonna make a little bit more money that way. I'm not interested if he paid two pound for it and he was charging me a hundred. Good luck to him. That is the name of the game. So there's obviously a little bit more in it for him selling it to me. He has said it's 2019 and I will say the same as what I always do. I've just filled up with diesel. I've jumped in the truck. I'm on my way there. But before we do, because it's so new, I am just going to quickly do, as usual, a car vertical. So we'll get that done and then I'll pick up once we get there. So a little bit of a strange one here. As soon as we put the chassis number in, it's actually come up that it's a Renault NV200 Tecna DCI. Now the the van's actually a Nissan. The guy said it was a Nissan. So we will need to look into that when we arrive at the house and just check on the V5 that that's correct. So mileage okay, theft okay, accidents. It's come straight up there. He did tell me it's been written off. They've claimed off the insurance and it is a category S. But I just wanted to check all of the information on the vehicle just to make sure that it was all spot on. Stolen vehicle check. This check was performed in all of these countries. So United Kingdom, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Ukraine, just to mention a few. So it's all good there. The mileage. We're not really going to get much of a mileage graph on this one purely because it's not had its first MOT yet. So damaged record, United Kingdom. We know the assessor just writ it off, so he hasn't done an estimate to repair and he hasn't written anything about the damage type there. So that this test was performed in all of these countries as well. And it clearly says there, record found, 26 of the 6, 2021, written off. Loads of tips and tricks down here. There's nine that you can go through when purchasing a car that really does help. So I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support doing these checks for us. And guys, to get 10% off doing your check, use the link in the description. Let's get and have a look at the van. Actually a few days later now, guys, we've had quite a lot on but it's back at the yard. This is the little van. I really couldn't do any recording while I was there. We was right outside his house. All the neighbours was outside. It was a lovely evening. So, yeah, bit of damage in the front. But really, we did take a chance with this one. But it was very, very cheap, I thought. It is a non-runner. Since his dad had the accident, he said the van just cut out and it won't start. They did try and turn the key but it's not actually running and it has been to the insurance assessors as well and I don't think they've tried to start it so you can see it's a bit like the Astra damage Chris isn't it he's, he's hit it high up and folded everything down you can kind of see it from there I did have a little look round it it's not none of the chassis legs seem to be bent or anything like that but most important for us probably is to get it running isn't it because it's quite it's not a massive van, but we don't want to be pushing this around and we don't want to be pulling it with the with Chris's quad, really, because it is quite heavy. Or pine parts. Or pine parts, yeah. So it's a shame, really, the bonnet has done the wing there. Yeah, Do you know, I didn't even notice that, Chris. Yeah. It's done the windscreen as well, and that will be the bonnet it's that's done that. Up, yeah. yeah, being literally where they've lifted it up after the accident they broke the windscreen but that's a shame he did also tell me that a couple of years ago when it was pretty much new his dad did reverse into something and damaged the back bumper and the back door he said rob it's been repaired it's not amazing but it didn't go through the insurance so 
we need to tackle that little problem as well. But like I said, most important is going to be getting it running. It is quite a nice van. It's got air con, electric windows, CD, USB, six speed, the alley wheels. So it's obviously quite a nice model, isn't it? I haven't even looked what model it is. Loader. Double side loader, yeah. And then the other nice thing about it was because we bought it from the owner, he purchased it from the insurance. It come with both keys, the service book, book pack, locking wheel nut keys, etc. I'm not going to waffle on too much. We need to crack straight on and actually start trying to find out why it's not running. Charge the battery. Because it's had a smack in the front, there's probably going to be broken sensors and things like that. So let's crack straight on and start looking into it. So you would have seen there quite a bit of going through the fuses and this is the situation ignition all comes on now i'm sure he said it cranked but we got nothing at all there have we so chris pulled the big main cover off and we haven't checked every single fuse but we checked the main ones in there which was f22 key start 10 amp right f21 key start 10 amp and 115 amp yeah, wasn't I'm it just looking for that now what was that engine one? management oh, no, or yeah, something oh we checked the fuel pump 15 amp, that's right F20, yeah and then there was another one we didn't know what it was which was a 15 amp. so we checked it anyway it, it, it didn't make no difference. there's three fuse boxes there's one there chris pulled the cover off three main fuses they was all fine the um he's also pulled that pipe off because it was squashed here we've thrown that in the back there's a couple of little fuses here that i checked through because I'd, they was right in front of me and they was easy to get to and then of course that there was them three down there but he has just looked in the book he did say there's another fuse box inside yeah. didn't you I peeled a bit of those wires back just to check there on that bit of wiring now and a bit on the start but it all seems all right it does look like it's slightly damaged there but, but it might just be the cover a meter, we, and test that there's power to that starter Definitely. Just in case. Should we go through the fuse box inside? I'll, I'll go and get a meter while you do that. Right, Chris is going to do that, and I'm going to crack on checking the fuse inside. It is a bit tedious going through everything, but it'll be nice to know. Normally, when a car does have an accident, it does blow fuses. Mm. What's that? It's got one of them. A pyro. That would kill the ignition, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. So it won't be that, would it? Well, guys, it's just going to be a case of investigation, so we'll crack on. we ended up going through everything underneath the bonnet and it's all fine nothing's broken none of the wires are broken none of the fuses are blown power to the starter, power to the starter. we've got ignition lights like i said earlier no crank but i've just plugged the obd in it and nothing up, this it? normally lights up and starts beeping so we're gonna have to investigate that it's a bit weird isn't it really on, but isn't it? the ignition's on We've got nothing there. I've tried logging on with this and it just comes Could up. Could be a pop fuse somewhere else, couldn't it? Yeah. Well, we, we haven't been through these ones yet, so no, let's no. find a fuse box. Just going to continue on. We need to get this running and driving, really. Let's do it. Hopefully you can see that. I've just pulled all of that row out. Pulled one out of there. That was okay. Then I went up and you, it looks like, guys, there's meant to be two in there. There was only one. And that's the one I've just pulled out. And as you can see, it's blown. So Chris is just running to get some fuses. But if you look, none of them others have got terminals both sides. Only those top two have. There's actually two missing. Uh, one's blown, Chris, and there's one missing. Yeah, sometimes is though, isn't there? Yeah, there's two terminals on it. That's what yeah, makes me say it. So 
I'll put this one in and see if the OBD works and then code read it. 10 amp. It's the second one down. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do this live so you can see. Do you want me to hold the camera? Where's the, can you pass us the code dongle? Oh, it's here. Yeah, let me. All right, mate, thank you. you want the ignition on it? Doing it. That's weird. It's better. Does yes. it light up? No, nah, nothing. Let me try right. that fuse. All right, yeah, stick That's one That's the in. blown one. You've got another 10 amp? Yeah. We use a 10 amp because we don't know what's meant to be in it if it's got to have one. A bit awkward to get in. I'll turn the ignition off a minute, mate. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's on. Right. That's weird, isn't it? So I have one missing and one blown. Do you reckon what? Do you reckon possibly that other one you've just changed the blown again? It's not unrelated. And then someone swapped the fuse, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Shall I do a code read on it? Yeah, yeah. We'll do you want to stay live? No, no we're doing live. It takes quite a while, does it? Does, yeah. As you can see, that's now communicating. Everything's flashing. And this is why I asked Chris to cut there. 19 percent and it's already been going for a couple of minutes it does take quite a while to go through all of the systems but already i'll see at the top there a few of them have come up red it does keep flicking through but body control module abs and bcm so once we get once this does get to the end we'll then pick up and go through those codes and have a look what's going on that search the whole car and everything's okay apart from those three if you hit this, it gives you a little drop down box normally. There's a bit of reflection there, though. Is there? Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to go back because there's a drop down box. It makes it easier. Otherwise, it'll take me quite a long time to go through the whole thing. No, it's not going to do it. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, read the fault codes on all three of those units. There's quite a lot there. It's a fuel fuel flow. flow regulation circuit. All right. Difference of key. Mm. Very strange. Lock mode. What we're going to do is just, because it's been in an accident, we're going to clear them and then go through clear fault codes. Yes, clear. And we're going to clear the ABS one as well and all of the other ones. Read fault codes. So we'll read it again just to see if any of them are come back. This this may take me a while, Chris. So we probably can't record it. No, no DTCs detected, so right. they're actually gone. So, so probably I'll, I'll, crank it now, or see if it'll crank, eh? ABS, I am going to go through and clear I all of the code, it. yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, this does take some time sometimes, so clear fault codes, yes. Clear fault codes complete, so... There should only be one set of codes left in there, which is BCM. Well, it's actually being quite quick today. We are connected to the Wi-Fi. I don't know if that helps. Read fault codes. So what we got there? NATS antenna amp. So that's only radio related. We clear it anyway. It's not really relevant. Clear fault codes complete. So we've got no fault codes. Turn the ignition off. And then turn some, it back. some plug that. Yeah. And see if it will crank. Fuel pump. That won't run him, No, it? it won't. Do you want to stand at the front in case there's anything in the way? Nothing on the engine. I'll do a check. Don't want nothing to touch it. I think we're good. Oh, yes! Sweet ass. So them fuses. Oil light gone out. Yeah, yeah, airbag light's just gone out. Doors open, seatbelt light, and coolant light. Listen to that. Give it a little. It sounds like there's no intercooler, but it's broke. It's broke. That engine yeah. sounds sweet. Let's check for any leaks. That's unbelievable. How good is that? Oh, that's good. That's good, isn't it? Right, let's get it in the yard. Yeah. Let's do it. It drove right, guys. I drove it straight in the yard. We've put that down underneath it, that mat, just in case it is leaking. 
Chris said, what we do, Rob, we get it in the yard and we just get it stripped so that we know what bits it's going to need. And also, he's really keen to investigate that bit of wiring. He said, because it hasn't hit any wiring, really. And that was one of the main fuses. So, as that starter motor arced out, is one of those wires in there a little bit dodgy. So, we're just going to concentrate on getting this front stripped off. It'll allow a lot more access. And then we can see if there's any damage on the front of the engine, i.e. starter motor, oil filter, etc., etc. So... Guys, I'm not going to bore you and time-lapse it. The bumper's not got a lot holding it on. As you can see, it's snapped off there. All these have popped out, and it's even snapped off round here. That little bit of the bumper's still in there, so there's probably only a few little screws on it. I'll get that stripped out, and then we'll all have a proper look at it. Guys, we're well happy. Got very, very lucky with this one. Not only is it now on the button, runs and drives, we've just stripped everything off. And I did say to Chris it was quite high up, but that was probably a little bit misleading, wasn't it? So it had no aircon gas in it. And as you can see, that aircon pipe's folded right over. So that's obviously where it let go because there wasn't really any damage on the condenser itself. We've also got a very minor dent in the oil filter, so got very lucky there with that. The rubber there, covering up the live on the alternator, that's knackered, but only the rubber. That is only the rubber, we got very lucky there. A little bent bracket here, you can see, quite flimsy, that wants bending round straight. And something's broken off of it there, it's only plastic. The pipes, is, it? is it one of the air pipes? Yeah. And of course, intercooler. That was this side. So the only, really, the only part that's got to be welded into this, that's all fine, is that headlight panel. And we just had a quick look there. You've got three or four spot welds up here, two there, and then you've got a couple. Yeah, yeah there they are there. There's one, two, three spot welds, which actually weld it. Probably be easier to show you that tower there. So... Not no, nah, nice straightforward, easy yeah, little job. Hinges. It's going to need new bonnet hinges, yeah, new bonnet. Landing that panel. Landing panel, yep. Yeah. That wing, yeah. Chris said he'd repair that, no problem. This one, we may have to buy a new one, but he did say we'll whip it off. It's It does look fixable. So the corner's bent down there, and you can see it's... That's only what the bonnet's done, though, and it's pushed it out. I think we had... What car was it where you had to roll the wing back in? It was the Astra. Where they get hit here actually rolls that wing outwards. So Chris had to roll it back. So just going inside, there's all your parts. All the parts we're going to need to repair it. So front bumper, again, got very lucky. None of the spotlights are broke. None of the pipes appear to be split. That's the top of the intercooler there. And the back of it, you can see, took a bit of a wallop over there. It's all really plastic. Even one of the headlights, passenger side is okay. Driver side one is toast. Uh, you know you're saying house here, Chris, didn't you? I forgot to mention that. And someone will say, what about that, Rob? The pipe, you can see there, it's actually been squashed. So when we get a front end, we'll probably get, well, we will be changing that pipe because you can see, yeah, it's been squashed for quite a while. But overall, quite happy with it. We're going to jump on eBay, have a look for some bits. So I've already spoke to Mark round at Kent Autos. He said, Rob, I've got nothing for it. Everything like this, as soon as it comes in, they'll either buy one to repair themselves or it goes out very quickly. So I'm going to jump on the net and have a look for some bits. I thought I'd get Chris to hold it and actually turn it round for once because normally I'll just be pointing it here and talking to you. So we went on eBay, found a company in Manchester that's got a red pack slam panel and crash bar and crash bar but that's all they have got their breaking one and it's in black which is a shame i then rung silver lake and they are breaking one but the it was hit on the passenger side they said the bumper's damaged headlights damaged 
So all and all they had left was a crash bar and a couple of other silly yeah. little bits, wasn't it? Yeah. So what we we just we've put the feelers out there. We're just going to keep trying to find all the bits because we don't want to do a video, put half the bits on it, and then come back and do another video doing the other half. You know how we like to work. So in the meantime, we will be concentrating on getting all the bits because. This is going to be quick, Chris, isn't it? Quite once, a reasonable. Yeah, with the parts, yeah. Once we've got the parts, quick turnaround. So we're going to finish it off today and then we'll have to uh, pick up once we get some bits for it. Chris's idea there, give it a quick wash. There was quite a lot of like water and antifreeze that had burst all over this here. And he said it'd be nice to give that a clean because obviously we're going to be putting it back together. And as you can see, it come up lovely. And I've got the rest of that residue off that was on there as well. Also, he said it might need other bits. So it'd be nice to see what it's like underneath all of that grime. I think you would agree, it come up really nice. The wheels come up quite nice. There's no major marks, dents or scratches down this side. A couple of little chips here, but that's actually paint on top, so that's all coming off okay. Back doors, we know that one wants a bit of work, and the rear bumper as well. And then this side's okay. Right up until you get to the front wing. So, it's actually scratched the glass there as well. That might come out. Overall, we're quite happy with it just now a case of locating all of those bits we'd like to get this done as soon as possible and get it out the door hopefully guys another nice easy quick one there it seems to be quite nice underneath very very minimal damage and as we see earlier in the check it's actually category s uh, van and that's due to them tiny little spot welds on that one little headlight panel it's going to need dr uh, drilling off and re-spot welding on but it's crazy but to be honest, the, the cat S's do work out a bit cheaper for us. And like I've said in previous videos, sometimes they're actually a lot less work. So when you look at the little KA, I mean, that, that's cat S as well, but that's quite a lot of work. Quarter panel, rear beam, that van's nice and straightforward and 2019 with low mileage. So I just said in that previous bit, we have pretty much every single bit for that van's available on eBay, isn't it? but we don't want to go down the route of buying a bit here or a bit there. If we have to, we will, and it wouldn't be the first time. We've done it a lot, but wouldn't it be lovely to actually buy all of the bits in a job lot off of the same person? That would really make sense. So let us know what you think of the little van in the comment section, and don't forget, guys, as soon as the van's done, finished, and ready to sell, I'll advertise it on Instagram. It's only I only say that because we get quite a lot of people say, put my name down for that van as soon as it's done we don't do that you know we like to get them finished and as you know i will be running it once it's done to make sure everything's okay anyway i've uh, more than more than give you enough waffle this week in the video so we'll leave it there today check out the merchandise the link is in the description down below follow us on instagram for some little sneak peeks at selvage rebuilds like subscribe and share on all your social networking sites and we'll see you early next week in the next one